I think that the war with Russia was absolutely unnecessary, but I would point out that it occurred when Saakashvili, the then president, attacked uh, uh, Russian peacekeepers in South Ossetia. Now that was, I know, I know several, several of my friends have been ambassadors to Georgia. They were all shocked by this. They, they couldn't understand why he would do that. But I do think that given where Georgia is, geographically and so on, it is very important for Georgia to have normal relations with Russia. Uh, I think that it shouldn't be a matter of saying, are you going to be a friend to Russia? Or are you going to be a friend to the United States? You want to have normal, friendly relations with both of them. And it seems to me one doesn't exclude the other. Hello, everybody. This is Pascal from Neutrality Studies, joined today by my co-host on all things Georgia, Lasha Kasratze. Tonight, we have the tremendous honor of talking to Ambassador Jack Matlock again. Among many other achievements and postings, Ambassador Matlock served as the United States' top diplomat to the Soviet Union from 1987 to 1991, with his duties in Moscow ending only months before the dissolution of the country itself. He was famously working with President Reagan and Bush Sr. to end the Cold War, which, by the way, he keeps emphasizing happened due to mutual agreement and good diplomacy, not because of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Ambassador Matlock, welcome back. Glad to be with you. Ambassador Matlock, uh, we want to discuss today a bit the situation in Georgia and your perceptions of how the country moved. And since you were uh, ambassador also, you were ambassador to the Soviet Union and Georgia was part of the Soviet Union, I suppose you have seen and and uh, uh, observed a lot also of the political movements there. So maybe to start, what do you think are the most important things to know and keep in mind when trying to understand Georgia's place in the international system today? Well, I have not been able to follow closely internal events in Georgia for the last few years. But as you mentioned, I have been very interested in Georgia for a long time. And when I was ambassador and even before that, uh, when I had speeches in Georgia, I took the effort to learn enough of the Georgian language to read them in the Georgian language. So I feel a, a special affinity uh, for that country. Now, I think that in looking at their their place in the world, I would say, first of all, they are geographically located in the South Caucasus. And uh, that means that to the north, you have Russia, uh, to uh, the south, Turkey, and uh, of course, uh, within the Transcaucasus, you have two other countries, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, and in the case of Georgia and the others to a degree, you have minorities, uh, and uh, or at least you did. And uh, so that uh, and uh, some of the problems that Georgia has had really relates to the way the Georgians began to treat those minorities as they were getting their independence. While I was still ambassador of the Soviet Union, uh, Mr. Gamsakhoria, who had, in effect had taken political control, uh, actually began to besiege uh, the, the capital of, of South Ossetia, actually during the winter to cut them off, and uh, so on. So that this has been a problem that Georgia, as it got more independent, uh, tended to uh, treat its minorities the way it did not want it to be treated uh, by the Russians. Uh, this is one problem that uh, I think we've had. Now, uh, so I think that, uh, broadly speaking, uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, Georgia uh, obviously has made a lot of progress in converting the economy from the command economy to, uh, you might say, a 
uh, and, and much more democratic and and uh, uh, capitalist uh, economy, and this is a great achievement. I think along the way, uh, Georgia, like most of the former Soviet republics, has had a real struggle with corruption and uh, uh, the, these other uh, things. I think that one of the problems we have had has been that uh, uh, many Georgians, I think, dissatisfied as they should have been uh, with uh, much of the uh, governing, tended to think that if only they could be in NATO, uh, they would get back South Ossetia and Abkhazia, or, and if they were in the EU, they would suddenly start living uh, like uh, people in Western Europe. Actually, I think that, uh, first of all, I think the effort or desire to become an associate of the uh, the European Union uh, was quite reasonable uh, at the moment. I don't think yet uh, Georgia quite meets the requirements for that. And But as far as NATO is concerned, I think it was true from the very beginning uh, that uh, this would not solve Georgia's problems. In fact, it would exacerbate them <clears throat> because Russia, and as we are learning now from the war in Ukraine, would not, and I would say should not tolerate a hostile alliance uh, with bases uh, on its borders. Russia simply won't allow that. Now, maybe you'd say theoretically it would be a good idea. As an American, I would say it's not a good idea. And uh, uh, so it does seem to me that uh, one has to understand that many of the problems uh, that Georgia is facing are to some degree internal. Now, uh, and uh, a second, I think that the war with Russia was absolutely unnecessary, but I would point out that it occurred when Saakashvili, the then president, attacked uh, uh, Russian peacekeepers in South Ossetia. Now that was, I know, I know several Several of my friends have been ambassadors to Georgia. They were all shocked by this. They, they couldn't understand uh, why he would do that. Now, of course, the, uh, the Russian uh, offensive was very damaging to Georgia, and Russia is still occupying more territory uh, than they would have if that hadn't happened. But I do think that given where Georgia is, geographically and so on, it is very important for Georgia to have normal relations with Russia. And uh, uh, one thing, you have a very significant Georgian diaspora in Russia, and uh, uh, their fate is going to depend a lot upon uh, Georgia not being seen as a hostile country. And, of course, uh, there is the fact that uh, uh, the Transcaucasus as a whole is uh, you know, uh, they're also sort of next to Turkey. And if they start getting involved in some, uh, you might say, civilizational split uh, with sort of Russia on one side and, and others on the other, I think this is very dangerous, not only to Georgia, but to a lot of other things. So that uh, I think that it shouldn't be a matter of saying, are you going to be a friend to Russia? Or are you going to be a friend to the United States? You want to have normal, friendly relations with both of them. And it seems to me one doesn't exclude the other. Uh, that, but that doesn't mean that you have any desire to become a military ally of, on, on one side or the other. It seems to me that uh, uh, that hasn't. Now, as far as as the problems with uh, with Abkhazia and uh, uh, South Ossetia, it's going to be a long time before 
uh, these can be settled. And, uh, uh, but they're certainly not going to be settled by the use of force on one side or the other. And uh, so I would say in general, it seems to me that it is in Georgia's interest to, uh, to maintain good relations with all its neighbors and, and particularly the larger countries uh, such as uh, Russia and Turkey. And of course, as an American, I would like to think that uh, uh, we have uh, a very close relationship, but I don't think the United States can or will take responsibility for Georgia's security. These are all very important points that uh, Lasha, in previous discussions, you also pointed them out. Do you want to briefly react to what you heard from Ambassador Matlock? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ambassador, thank you once again for being with us and for allocating your time from your, what I would imagine would be a very busy schedule. Um, what you have just um, outlined and said is profoundly important uh, and uh, it, and unfortunately um, this deep sort of view of things uh, has not been uh, the part of uh, either the Georgian society or Georgian politics, uh, I would argue for the past 30 years. Um, and especially between the years of 2003 and 2012. Um, I agree with you entirely that Georgia exists. It just so happened uh, that it is the it is at the mercy of uh, uh, you know ruthless geopolitics, and more often than not, uh, its leaders in the post-Soviet era um, have played uh, a very risky game of ignoring these basic geopolitical principles. I don't want to go into sort of some detailed language here, but just basic failure to figure out introspectively uh, what true sort of national interests are were for Georgia. Um, and that hubris, <clears throat> that hubris that a country like Georgia, small, poor state, uh, cannot afford uh, has been ignored, uh, the, the basic fact. Um, so to your very important, back to your points, um, I, I agree with you that Georgia is in a very volatile situation. You have the United States and the West, uh, who I would argue were never prepared to provide uh, any security guarantees to Georgia. Um, you have Russia, in the north, and we all know history there between Georgia and Russia. And then we have, uh, you know, our neighbors in the South Caucasus, Azerbaijan, Armenia, and uh, of course, Iran, Turkey. Um, given the current geopolitical change, if you will, in the world, in the international system, um, we are clearly seeing the re so the return of multipolarity, uh, the unipolar world is over. I think you would agree with me on that. And um, relative power of the United States is in decline. I'm not saying the United States remains to be the most powerful country on the planet. It will continue to do so on individual level. But generally speaking, in relative terms, I think that unipolar sort of Atlanticist influence is, um, is, um, is being reduced. Um, we have China. We have Russia, and then we have the small states, in this case, Georgia. Um, what do you think should a small country like Georgia do? I completely agree with you. I'm, I'm basically answering your question here, but I mean, my, my question to you here, but uh, um, I, I agree with you that Georgia needs to find some pragmatic foreign policy and common ground with Moscow, as ironic as and as irritating as it might sound to some of the perhaps radical forces um, um, but do you think that even the slightest attempt under this government, under the current Georgian dream government, um, uh, can be viewed as a, a, a correct and the right step forward, uh, to find some ground with Russia, um, uh, in hopes that, um, Russia, A, won't reinvade Georgia, 
uh, and down the road, maybe perhaps uh, they will start to talk about um, uh, sort of uh, rec you know, reconstituting Georgia's sovereignty, um, given the fact, as I mentioned earlier, that neither the United States and obviously much, le much less Europe are prepared to guarantee Georgia's security. And with that, and taking that into consideration, do you think that this sort of onslaught coming out of Washington against Georgia now with accusations that it is turning against the West and moving towards Russia um, is, a, is a smart policy? I don't agree with uh, those allegations. Uh, uh, because it does seem to me that uh, there was never any realistic possibility of, of in effect, solving uh, Georgia's internal problems uh, by the use of force or uh, by uh, either Western Europe or the United States, uh, uh, solving those problems by its own and giving its geographic location and its centuries-long history of, of very much involvement with Russia, uh, really a, an, an important part of the Russian Empire. I mean, to the point that two Georgians sort of dominated the, the whole Soviet Union for several decades. So, I mean, this history is deeply intertwined. And, uh, you know, uh, I think the idea that somehow uh, Georgia could become, uh, you know, a very flourishing country uh, populated entirely by Georgians or those uh, uh, and uh, uh, with the help of, uh, of the West. I mean, this, this is simply an illusion. And uh, 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 I think that... Uh, uh, yes, it was extremely important that Georgia be a democratic country and be able to make its own decisions. But these decisions um, they really have to be realistic. I mean, our neighbors like Mexico and Canada, they wouldn't dare think of joining an alliance uh, that the United States was not in. I mean... There are certain things that you you simply don't do, I have, <laughs> and uh, uh, so I think they have to understand that. I know that there there are reasons to be uh, very concerned, particularly uh, during the communist period. But that communist period was one in which Georgians had a very great role in creating. They mustn't forget that. In fact, it was Georgians who were ruling Russia for a time, and not a very happy time for either country. So I think we've got to uh, understand that yeah, I think it is very much in Georgia's interest to have good relations with Russia. And, uh, and I, don't, I don't think that Russia is going to, or is able, really, to dominate them in a way that they change their national character but uh, uh, this then, I was in Moscow for five days in July, and one of the evenings I had uh, a dinner in my favorite Georgian restaurant there, and it seemed to me at least the Georgians there were uh, doing pretty well. And uh, 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 so uh, the thing is, I do think uh, that the current effort by uh, the Georgian president to improve relations with Russia uh, should not be uh, seen as somehow uh, contrary to uh, democracy. I think it is in Russia, in Georgia's interest. Um, my apologies, um, Lasha, there's a uh, hurricane currently in Florida, and I suppose he, he already warned me there might be a power outage. But apart from that, Ambassador Matlock, um, you were ambassador to the USSR in a period when there was real effort for reconciliation. I think especially the role of President Reagan is maybe underestimated in this in this regard. Um, recently, though, um, 
what the rhetoric that's coming from the State Department and the rhetoric that we also hear in the big media outlets in the United States when it comes to Georgia is, to me, it sounds as if, though, the portray is that Georgia has to choose between a democratic West, a future in the democratic West, including the European Union and NATO, and a autocratic future under uh, Russian influence. And I that's that's how I perceive what what I'm hearing. Um, how do you see the current the current strategic goals of the U.S. government, and and how do you interpret what you're hearing in the news about Georgia? Well, first of all, I think that it is unfortunate that we have begun to think about sort of autocracy as if that is somehow comparable to communism. Autocracy, you can't say uh, that to, it's a matter of degree. And every, every country now, you have some like Saudi Arabia that are, you might say, de jure autocrats. Uh, uh, the king has theoretically absolute power, just as you might say, in pre-revolutionary France and the other. Uh, but uh, the, the degree of autocracy can vary, including in democratic countries. Let's not forget that de Gaulle was considered too much an autocratic leader by many, but he was able to get them out of two of their most serious problems, leaving first Vietnam and then Algeria, which would, in a democratic way could not have been done. So when any country feels threatened, its security threatened, it is going to insist upon a strong leader that can defend them. And I think we have to understand that. It is not the same thing as a communist leader because communism was based upon the class struggle thesis that there was going to be a proletarian revolution against capitalism throughout the world, which would throw out all the capitalist governments, would eliminate the bourgeoisie and create a communist society. That was threatening to the West and it was threatening to democracy. Autocracy in and of itself is not necessarily a threat to other countries. So let's not confuse the two, and many people do, as if it is the same thing. And autocrats don't care whether you have an autocratic system or not. They just want to protect or control their own country. And uh, uh, some may be aggressive, but some may not. But that's, that's a different question. So, I think the idea that uh, uh, because Russia has become more autocratic than it was in the 90s when they really didn't have democracy, it was more like anarchy, and it gave democracy a bad name, uh, what was happening then. At that time, you know, I would say Georgia was struggling and, and, and uh, getting in violent conflict with uh, in Abkhazia and South Ossetia. And these were difficult times. But the thing is that uh, it is not autocracy in and of itself. And uh, the the worst thing one a country like Georgia can do would be to uh, convey to its neighbors that it could be the base of a security threat to them. And say, getting into NATO would certainly do that. Not that they're going to get into NATO, they never will. Even though I know that in 2008, there, there was a, a vote that uh, eventually uh, the door would be open to uh, Georgia and Ukraine. I think that was a tremendous mistake. And uh, we're seeing some of the results of it in the Ukraine war today. So that so, as I say, I haven't been to Georgia in several years, and I don't know uh, the current president. Uh, I only read about it. 
But if he is trying to establish, I would say, more reasonable and normal relations with Russia, I think that's in George's interest. Do you think that a normalization of relations with Russia would best go through direct negotiations with Russia or through a rapprochement with South Ossetia and Abkhazia first? If you made the strategy, what, which route would you go? Well, I do think that, I think if, if they can get better relations with Russia, uh, they they might get a more uh, you know, sympathetic hearing and sort of improving relations with South Society and Alcazia. I don't think that they're going to come under Georgian sovereignty anytime soon. I think that's just being realistic. I'm, I'm not saying that's good or bad. It's just not a realistic thing. Now, I think that the Russian occupation of areas outside South Ossetia and Abkhazia uh, should be negotiable. Uh, have those. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, again, I'm speaking in general terms without really being close to the uh, effects now, because I, I haven't been there for several years. Um, Lasha is back right now, and this is maybe a good uh, moment to ask him, Lasha, um, the the reconciliation process with uh, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, how is that one going at the moment? Is there no no talks between the sides at all, or is there are there some tacit kind of um, um, diplomatic moves between the Georgian government and the two split away regions? The conversation between uh, South Ossetia and Abkhazians are tense, um, but there was a sense uh, that um, there could be progress made uh, in terms of um, Russia's possible um, pressure on Abkhazia, and there have been some instances of this now with um, Russia's decision to reduce funding, or if not outright cut uh, or just stop funding uh, to Abkhazia. Um, and then uh, there have been uh, in the past few months uh, some warnings against uh, uh, South Ossetia um, um, uh, to to tone down the rhetoric on uh, you know independence or joining Russia. Uh, it was I think uh, um, it was a categorical no, uh, basically coming out of Moscow uh, that uh, claims of su such claims would be. Uh, that should be expected uh, in Moscow to be reciprocated. Um, so, uh, you, know, you know, it's still a long, long way to go uh, before uh, any serious conversation will take place uh, um, regarding, um, uh, you, know, you know, possible restoration of Georgia's sovereignty. Um, but, the, but, but the fact is that, um, uh, you know, this, with this current uh, sort of rapprochement, you know, Pragmatic politics of foreign policy or pragmatism with Moscow, um, Russia has quote unquote warmed up, um, and it's not using the um, uh, sort of that same uh, you know uh, language of provocation uh, and uh, sort of the aggressive rhetoric that uh, in the past have uh, uh, only widened um, uh, you know the the split. Um, uh, and the uh, fervor of separatism in the region. Uh, although I have to say that um, uh, the border issue is still a big, uh, that whole uh, moving off the fence uh, uh, further on to the uh, Georgian territory is still an issue. And uh, although I have not heard uh, recently uh, of any um, Incidents uh, where South Ossetians, uh, with, with you no know, and and the Russian uh, sort of occupying um, um, uh, military personnel that's there, um, uh, with their help, moving uh, the, the 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 border fence closer and closer into the Georgian territory. That issue um, has been a serious problem. 
Um, but then again, nothing concrete has been done to resolve that problem. This is not to say that uh, behind the scenes there isn't a negotiation um, taking place, uh, sort of uh, for uh, sort of a diplomacy 2.0, um, uh, sort of uh, on um, a semi-official level, um, because obviously um, through intermediaries. Um, mm -hmm. And um, maybe because we are we are nearing the time limit, um, Ambassador Matlock, I would like to just ask you a last question, which is like, if you had some um, advice, if people in Tbilisi and in Moscow were listening to you, what would be the advice of of how to how to restructure or how to get to a better understanding? And maybe also people in in in, in Ankara, <laughs> the whole region, how to get to an to how to get to a stable moment in the South Caucasus. Well, I can't presume to advise in a precise way because I'm really not, you know, absolutely familiar with first of all the people now. I used to know most of the people on both sides, but not anymore. And uh, also, uh, I'm, I'm just not informed of the details. But I would say, if there is an attitude of, of not dealing in a hostile way, but trying to at least define some of the areas where there is a common interest, and there will be many, between Georgia and Russia and start trying to deal with those. And that would make it harder later to get to the much more difficult ones. And uh, so uh, I think, you know, the whole attitude that uh, they were simply going to become part of the West, as they put it, and be in NATO and, and EU, and this is going to solve all their problems, that was never realistic. And uh, so I think that now uh, the leaders need to uh, uh, think about where their interests coincide with Russia, and many of the interests do, uh, and, and then begin to improve the relationship. Uh, and then you can approach the more difficult issues then uh, sort of step by step, uh, you know. I, I recall that, uh, well, no analogy is absolutely accurate, but uh, when I was called to the White House uh, in 1983 to try to devise a way to improve relations during the Cold War, the first thing I did was to try to have our president define the issues as means of cooperation to achieve a common end. And we started that way and we got from less important things to more and more important things because we learned that basically our true interests were not in conflict. We, neither of us wanted war and, and neither of us wanted to have to spend so much money on armaments and other things. So that uh, I think that uh, if one begins to think about, uh, okay, where do our interests coincide and where can cooperation help us both? Begin to define those and talk about them. And I would say avoid unnecessary sort of uh, public polemics. Uh, and uh, the, uh, I know that it's very hard. Uh, Georgia has been invaded, and part of its territory has been occupied. And, and I guess in Georgia's eyes, uh, the Russians have, in effect, created the uh, South Ossetian and uh, Abkhazian uh, thing. But, uh, you know, uh, I think that one has to start thinking about bigger things. And uh, one of them is that, uh, as I said, given their position, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're much better off with a cordial relations uh, with Russia, which doesn't require them to be a military ally necessarily. 
it doesn't even require them to be a part of the uh, economic uh, uh, area, but that should be considered uh, because I think that uh, uh, and naturally uh, uh, the larger uh, group you can uh, be a part of uh, as far as economies are concerned. Uh, there. Uh, so, and uh, I think that I would say uh, uh, one should be looking at that sort of thing. Now, what they are, I'm not sufficiently uh, knowledgeable in detail to give advice on that. Just a, uh, Pascal, if you don't if you don't mind, just a, just a quick question I have. Uh, do you think that the United States uh, can play a constructive role in this? I think they could, but they probably won't, given the present situation. I see. That's that's uh, that's very unfortunate, well. but um, that is very unfortunate. Yeah. But thank you very much for these insights. And you know what you laid out is really important. The uh, this is good advice. Start start small and go bigger. I do hope we get to um, to more reconciliation in the region. And Ambassador Matlock, I would like to thank you very much for your time today. Ambassador, thank you very much. Well, thank you. I'm glad to talk to. You. And I wish I wish the very best for Georgia. I love that country. I appreciate you saying that, sir. Thank you very much. And Georgia loves you back. Thank you.